Hello everyone, this is Lauren Ray Romero and this is Skein 11 of the All Wound Up podcast. It is Wednesday, work in progress Wednesday, July 24th, and uh, this is my second or third attempt to record this podcast. Right now, my lights are all messed up. I press the on button and nothing happens even though they should have a charged battery. Don't ever buy battery powered lights. Not a good idea. Um, so there's that. You can find me on social media as Lore. Whoops, I still can't ever figure this out. As Lore.Romero on Instagram and on Ravelry, still on Ravelry, as Mistral. And the spelling will be right down there on the bottom of the screen for you. It'll also come up at the end of the podcast. So um, obviously, I'm still on Ravelry, which means that I'm with Ravelry and that I support their decision to not allow hate speech in their community. Um, they haven't banned any group of people wholesale. I don't think that they've done anything wrong. They certainly haven't violated anyone's First Amendment rights. Um, so I'm definitely with them, and I agree that they should be allowed to provide a safe space for all members of the fiber community, including BIPOC, including LGBTQA plus individuals, and there shouldn't be anybody who goes on Ravelry and feels like they are seeing themselves being attacked. So I think it's a good decision on their part and I think it could be used as a model as they used the model from RPG.com for more social media sites and online communities going forward. I think that that is... My smoke alarm is dying. I think that that is definitely something to look out for. Um, as we've been seeing the discussion about diversity becoming more public in the online fiber community, I've definitely noticed a lot of people who are part of the majority group feeling as though they are being attacked by minorities. And I think that it's important to remember something. And this is something that I learned in a PD, a professional development as a teacher, about dealing with students from diverse populations and the idea that we learned in this professional development was ouch versus oops intent versus impact so while you might have intended to say something that was supportive or that was not aggressive your words may have come across and made an impact that was not as friendly as you intended, not as positive as you intended. So in those situations when we're having hard conversations, as somebody who's a part of the majority, you should be aware of your intent versus your impact. And if you say something that is perceived as an aggression, you should say, oops, and apologize, not, ouch, you hurt my feelings. Just something that we should all be considering. The fact that my camera moved says to me that it's time to move on to the next portion of the podcast. I would like to introduce you to my two latest acquisitions. And I don't know if I acquired them or they acquired me. One second. So this is Spencer with two S's and no C's, like Edmund Spencer who wrote The Fairy Queen. Yeah. He is a little tuxedo kitten. Look at the camera, Spencer. Yay! And he's about three months old. Uh, he's about to go get altered on Friday. They um, usually don't do it until six months, but maybe he's closer to six months. Whoops. Then we thought, we're not sure. And you can see his brother's head down here. This is Chaucer. Like Jeffrey Chaucer, who wrote the Canterbury Tales. You can see I'm an ELA teacher. Um, they were out on the streets outside of the school in which I work. Give me one second. I'm going to put them out of the yarn room before they tear everything up. One sec. I'm back. They were outside of the school in which I work. Um, and we were about to leave to go on our senior trip with our eighth graders to Washington, D.C. We're one of the only schools in the district, in fact, in the Bronx. There's, I know of at least one other, but... 
we're one of the only ones who takes our eighth graders on an overnight trip. So we were about to leave to go to DC and there were these two kittens running around um, and trying to get into the school building where they would have dined finally on roaches and mice, but that's not really a balanced kitten diet. So I took them. Um, it wasn't quite that simple, but I took them. I didn't want to leave them out on the street because that's not, you know, they're house cats, so they should be in a house. Um, but they needed someone and I took them. So one of my students' moms took them home for the weekend because we were going to DC. And then I negotiated with my landlady to have kittens and now I have two kittens. And they are amazing and wonderful and soft and they're so friendly. And I'm hoping that the um, neuter on Friday doesn't completely change their personalities because they have awesome personalities. I hope it just calms them down a little bit. Um, and that they never learn how to spray as a result of having it done nice and early. Yay! So thus far we have covered the first two things on my to-do list. I've got I'm, I'm with Ravelry, I've got Introduce Spencer and Chaucer. So now we can move on to some FOs. So this is a mostly finished object, but I'm counting it as finished. This is my Madewell sweater by Hoagie Locatelli. And the Madewell sweater is a stockinette cardigan. I've shown it to you. I showed it to you on the last podcast. It was mostly done, but here it is. It's very warm in here, or I would put it on for longer. It does have elbow patches. They're not sewn down. They're safety pinned on. Um, it was made out of yarn ink, tough sock in the flamingo colorway. I will put it on just to show it off. It when I blocked it, because I definitely wanted to wash it a little bit because of the um, fact that it was white and being carried around in my purse, um, it grew quite a bit in the sleeves. So I made the elbow patches, but I'm going to take them to my tailor. Her name is Tanya. She works on the south shore of Long Island. and She's a wizard, basically. I'm going to take them to her and see what she thinks about them and whether they should get sewn on. I've also gotten a button. Oh, he calls for a button right about here, but I never really wear my cardigans closed, so I don't know if I'm going to put that on. But because it's summer, I'm calling this a finished object, and I can do the one or two finishing touches um, before the weather gets cool enough to wear it. So that's the Madewell. It's all wrinkled right now, but that's okay. Uh, it's got a button band of one by one ribbing all around. It's got ribbing at the bottom, ribbing on the sleeves, but the rest of it is a basic stockinette raglan construction and I loved knitting it. I've never knit a cardigan before. This is my first cardigan, but I absolutely love it and I know I'm going to get a lot of wear out of it even though the sleeves are slouchier than I wanted because let's be real, who doesn't love a big comfy cardigan? I don't know anybody who doesn't love a slightly oversized cardigan, so I'm keeping it the way it is instead of panicking and trying what I can to put it small again. Um, yeah, so I just haven't decided about the elbow patches because the sleeves are so slouchy that I want to ask somebody who really knows about garment construction um, what I should do with them. But that's done and I'm going to wear it to death and I definitely have plans to make more cardigans as well as more regular sweaters, pullovers, um, in the future, but I love wearing cardigans so love it okay um yeah that's my only fo but that's to be expected because i didn't do that much knitting during the school year my ne my next segment is works in progress as always and today my first work in progress is something that was in hibernation i'm not even sure if i showed it to you before i um took my long hiatus during the school year but this is another Hohi Locatelli project. This one is in a um, an Otterly Adorable Knits project bag. It's the large drawstring bag. There are five half skeins of yarn in it right now. So you can see it's quite large. It fit comfortably the full skeins and I had no issues there. This is The Fading Point by Hohi Locatelli. And I have just finished up my first half. So you can see all five colors. Let me get the right side toward you. Ooh. Can you imagine this is just half of the shawl? It's 
going to be so big. I love oversized rectangular shawls, though. I've decided. I wear my starting point by Hohe all the time. I wear the Guernsey Wrap by Jared Flood all the time. And those are both oversized rectangles. So I'm definitely seeing this coming into rotation. Let me get it toward the sun since my lights are not working. There we go. Okay. This is the Aloha Mora Fade Kit by Trey Liz Color is Power. And it is a five color fade on a single base. It's on her Zeus base, which is 100% merino, super wash. And all of the yarns are named after Harry Potter characters. So we start with... Rubius Hagrid. There we go. Rubius Hagrid. Then we go into, this is the next one. This is Sirius Black. Then we have Severus Snape. Then Remus Lupin. Then the yellowest of yellows for his bumblebee name, Albus Dumbledore. Um, I'm absolutely loving the Grello. I love how throughout that gray and yellow, I'm trying to get it to not be in the dark, but it's hard because my lights are messed up. If I come close, will it? There we go. Within the gray and yellow, there's some purple and some brown. And I'm absolutely loving the depth of color in this. I've gotten so many compliments on it. And I'm like, listen, I didn't dye the yarn. Um, Trey Liz made a beautiful, beautiful fade kit. I looked at a lot of fades. I said I'm not stash diving for this one. Um, and it's absolutely amazing. So I finished this first half, which was in hibernation. It was up to about here. I was in the middle of this lace section, this first or second lace work section. I was about here. Um, and it had sit since about Thanksgiving. Um, and I finished it in about a week, this first half, and then put it on a holder and a spare needle, like the pattern instructs. And I decided to take a break from it to do a palette cleanser project, which I'll show you in a minute. Um, so that I could continue loving it because it is such a fun knit and it's super enjoyable. I've not gotten bored at all while doing it and I want to keep it that way. Um, I love this construction where you work the two um, pentagon shapes and then join them in the middle. I think it's a lot of fun. I did enjoy that I could switch back and forth more easily on the starting point because you cut each color yarn after you finish working it. But I'm liking the overall knit of this better. The only thing that I liked was that I could jump back and forth more easily on the starting point. But this is so much fun and I'm really enjoying it. But when I finished that, I decided that I would do a palette cleanser knit. And my palette cleanser knit is in another utterly adorable knits bag. This is a new one. I just got this in between the t this podcast and the last podcast. This is the mid-size zipper project bag. It's a Rifle Paper Company fabric, Wildflowers. There we go. And it's absolutely gorgeous. It's lined in a coordinating coral. Color of the year. Pantone. And it's got the removable D-ring. Absolutely loving it. I absolutely love all of Jen's bags. They're so well made. Um, super high quality. But this is my palette cleanser project. Um, I decided I wanted to make sure I kept loving the starting point as much as I loved working on it. Um, it's kind of mindless and nice, but I wanted to keep loving it. So I cast on, and apparently this is what it's supposed to look like, but it looks very silly. This is the Ripple Bralette by Jessie May Designs. And this will be a gift. I can't get it to show right. This will be a gift for my friend Lindsay. She's one of my roommates from college. Um, and she wears bralettes as crop tops because she has the, um, she has a short torso and she can pull it off. So I decided to cast it on because I had wanted to make one. Um, it's supposed to look like this. I checked. She says it in the patterns. It looks very silly, but apparently when you block it, it starts to look a little bit less 
bunny rabbit like um so this is the ripple bralette it's knit in lola bean yarn company on the bean sprout base which is an 80 20 merino nylon blend and it has a high twist i love a yarn with a high twist so this is the nymphadora tonks colorway i'm all about the harry potter yarns apparently this podcast but i've started the second strap which is a double knit i cord i can show you what the double knit i cord looks like so that's a double knit i cord and i'd never done a double knit i cord before and when i saw the instructions i was like why don't i just do a regular i cord why am i bothering with this this is so much work and then I realized that it makes sort of a flat ribbon instead of a round cord. So I brought in a project that I had previously finished to show you the difference. This is the double knit I cord, and this is a regular single knit I cord. And I've got to say, I love that I now know how to do this. Um, it makes kind of a ribbon instead of a cord. Love it. Um, definitely a very useful skill to have. So this little itty bitty crop top project which I will have to take pictures of because I'm going to send it off to Lindsay as soon as it's finished um has been a lot of fun and the fact that it's been like two or three days and I'm almost finished definitely made it the palette cleanser that I needed so a lot of fun I would make it for myself but I only really wear bralettes around the house so I've been weighing my options about that I mean do I want to keep going and make one for myself but then I'll only wear it in the house I don't know maybe I should get over my body image issues and just wear it out there's a cloud covering the sun oh well um maybe I'll get over my body image issues and wear it out if I make one but probably not so I'm gonna make this one as a gift and I know that it will get lots of love and use because when I was down in Alexandria visiting Lindsay, she was wearing pretty much exclusively little tiny crop tops. So, yay, somebody will get to wear it. It's the first time I've ever made a garment for another adult other than myself. So, Lindsay's definitely knit worthy, but that's the Ripple Bralette. Sorry, I keep stopping to drink, but it's about nine thousand degrees in my yarn room today um, I only have air conditioning in my bedroom I thought about podcasting in there and then I was like no it'll be too loud with the air anyway so here we go I've got broken lights and no ventilation where's OSHA somebody call OSHA all right my next whip is the Pagona by Stephen West and this is in a three bags fall project bag got dust bunnies on it it's spoon flower fabric and this is as I said the Pagona by Stephen West so I'm loving the yarn which is twisted and grooven by groovy hues fibers in the colorway these boots are made for walking and I did make progress since the last time I podcast I was down here and now I'm up here I did about two and a half inches um I don't love the pattern hang on get it in the light I don't absolutely love the pattern. If I come back here, you can see the colors properly. It's got green and teal and brown, and it's really beautiful, the yarn. But the pattern and I just don't get along. Um, I don't know why. It's not complicated. It's just one of those mental block situations. And now I've slipped stitches off the needle, and that's going to make me all kinds of frustrated because I'm not going to know what I did because this pattern and I don't get along. Um, I'm not even halfway through the ball. So I don't know if I'm going to finish that or if I'm going to eventually just give up because I should love what I'm doing, right? Um, yeah, but I love how it's coming out. So I know I would love the finished object. Just not in love with the pattern. It's got a cool bat wing shape when it's done. So I know like I've not knit another shawl that's shaped like that. But maybe there's a reason I haven't knit another shawl that's shaped like that. I like my shawl simple. I'm not doing lace work. I like my shawls simple. Actually, I don't know if I've done, I've only done one lace work shawl. Hmm. Anyway, but um, yeah, so that's the Pagona and I'm trying to decide if I want to keep going. We'll see. I love the yarn, but we'll see. 
My final work in progress before I move on to my large parade of acquisitions, I purposely put the Ripple bralette into that project bag. It hasn't been in a project bag because I've been working on it only at home. I purposely put it in that project bag so I could talk about it not during acquisitions because I have a lot. So this project is in a Leslie Jean Knits bag. It's very small and petite. Um, I like it. I don't think she's making bags anymore, which makes me sad because it's a cute little bag. But um, I needed a project to cast on to bring on the Washington, D.C. field trip that I mentioned earlier. We had the bus ride from New York City down to Washington, and um, the bus captain and I both agreed that we did not want to put on movies because if you put on a movie with middle school kids, they don't all like the movie. And then rather than just sit quietly and do what they would do if there was no movie on, they pitch a fit because they don't want to watch that movie. I don't want to watch that movie. So we decided we're just not going to put on a movie. They all have, you know, devices that they can stream on. And if they don't have a device that they can stream on, they have a friend who's sitting next to them whose device they can watch off. So we decided not to put on any movies, which meant that I needed to be able to entertain myself on the bus ride because for the most part, the kids know how to act on a bus, which is great. Um, Anyway, this is the project that I decided on. I had a poll in the Groovy Who's Fiber Facebook group and I let the group choose which yarn I was going to work with. So this is the My Duo, all one word, by Evelyn. And what this is, is it's a an asymmetrical shawl, a triangle, and it has a garter stitch panel and a stockinette panel with a um, a line of increases going up the middle. So this is Groovy Hughes Fibers Glittery and Groovin in Ancient Coin. This is one of her biggest sellers at shows and festivals and you can see why it's when I next podcast hopefully we'll see it with lights on it. It has a lot of sparkle in it. It's got Stellina and it is a beautiful rich and earthy blend of colors so it's got some slate blue it's um, brown and a copper tone and it's really just a beautiful yarn and uh, and it can't be shown off because my lights are dead there's that you can kind of see it it's um, a lot of fun to knit I went through my Ravelry favorites and I filtered for fingering weight shawls 400 grams and then I made sure that I looked for something really simple. I'm sorry, 400 yards, not 400 grams. That would be a lot of yarn. Um, I made sure that it was something really simple that I could knit while I was dealing with 80, you know, 80 eighth graders. Um, and I found something super simple, super easy. Um, and I absolutely love this pattern because of the garter and stockinette next to each other. So some yarns, not so much this one, but some yarns, they look totally different when you knit them in stockinette versus garter. And this pattern, this My Duo pattern, is a great way to show them off. It's really simple. It's a four row repeat and there's only three distinct rows within that four row repeat. So very simple, very fun knit, great for purse knitting. Um, right now it's got needle caps on it. You saw because I have the, um, my size four chow goo tips are on my ripple bralette. But as soon as I finish that, or if I want to go somewhere, I'll just unscrew them and put them on here. And I'll have it ready to go. On to acquisitions, of which there are many because I am a yarn pig. In fact, I have a couple of things that I've gotten that I put aside for the next podcast because I was like, listen people don't need to see all that. So my first round of acquisitions took place at the Long Island Fleece and Fiber Fair, which is an event that's held yearly out in Riverhead. Um, and it's sponsored by the Halleckville Museum Farm. It wasn't advertised that well this year, and it was a little bit smaller than it had been previously, but so my first set of acquisitions, I didn't buy, I earned. Suzanne and Thaddeus of Groovy Hughes Fibers had a half marathon to run 
on the first day of Long Island Fleece and Fiber Fair, and she and I had arranged after I worked the booth with them last year that I would just do the first day. And I had um, another Long Island knitter named Patty with me. Um, Patty has made some project bags. I don't have... Oh, yes, I do. Patty has made some project bags that I've shown on the podcast before. This is her Christ one of her Christmas ones. It's just a simple drawstring bag with a cord drawstring and one of those little stopper beads. Um, it's not... It's lined with the same fabric that's on the top, but that's how she makes her bags, and they are good bags. They work. But she and I ran the booth together that first day, and Suzanne told us that we could each pick four skeins. So I picked four skeins. And just like last year, I picked a sweater's quantity of Yakin and Groovin, the Merino Silk Yak Base. And this is showing up pretty well. Not great. There we go. It's kind of a copper penny color. It's like an orange pumpkin pie. I love it. It's called, I have it written down, Find a Penny. And there we go, in the sun. Find a Penny is on Yakin and Groovin. So that's a merino, a merino wool, silk, and yak fiber blend. So what makes yak fiber different than regular merino yarn? I can show you. I actually thought about this. I was like, you know what? Let me explain why the colors are so rich. So in my left hand, I've got a skein of undyed merino nylon blend. This is what we all seem to knit with the most. Um, it's just basic white yarn, cream colored yarn. Can't get a natural white in animal fiber yarn because it doesn't grow in that way. And if you bleach it, it would get damaged. So there's our basic merino that we knit with. No dye. Um, and then I have here from not, this is not Groovy Hughes yarn. This is from Little Fox. Um, this is a yak blend. So as you can imagine, when you put color onto these two yarns, it comes through brighter and clearer on this yarn. Rather than getting muddied though, color that's put on this yarn becomes really deep and rich. So I have the find a penny. This dye was probably a bright orange when she applied it, probably, to this yarn. Look at how it's it's so different. If she had dyed it on this, this yarn, this is actually from Groovy Hughes. Um, if she had dyed it on this yarn, it would have been a bright, like crazy orange. But because it's on this base, this color, it's so different and I absolutely love it. Um, yak is super warm as well. So it's great in the winter. And um, the fact that it's blended with silk and merino means that it's pretty stable. And I wanna put this back in the right spot. I don't know where the right spot is though. So it's just gonna go over here. Um, oh, got it. Means that it's pretty stable and um, you know, warm and comfortable and it's a lot of fun to knit with. If you've never knit with a yak blend, you totally should. Um, my next acquisition from Long Island Fleece and Fiber Fair is of course Lambstrings yarn on the Tralala -la sock base because I'm predictable as all get out. I love Lambstrings and I love the Tralala -la sock base. So here we are. This is, of course, 7525 Merino Nylon. The colorway is Raku, which is, it means that it is a pottery inspired yarn. And as a potter who works with yarn, I had to have it. Uh, it's not a brand new colorway. I think she debuted this two years ago, but I've been wanting to get it and I finally decided to do it. So it's a, a deep, rich green with some a bluish green though, with some brown stripes in it. And yeah, I don't know what it's gonna be yet. It might be, because it's so, it's relatively tonal, I might make a more complicated project with it that really needs the texture to show off. But yeah, that was my second acquisition. I was really good. I only bought one skein of lamb strings. That's hard for me to do. Last year I bought a sweater quantity plus some. Um, I have a lamb strings problem. I have a tra-la-la sock problem. 
but there we go. So that's that. And I purchased two more things. One of them is from Utopia Bath. This is the best hand cream ever. And she is serious. It is the best hand cream ever. Um, Utopia Bath is on Etsy. You can find her on Etsy. The link will be down there in the um, show notes. This has lanolin in it. It is amazing. It is in the honey almond scent, which smells like a candy shop or a bakery. And it's amazing. It's made with all natural ingredients. It's fragranced with natural essential oils. Um, and it's really, really worth it. Um, this little tube of lotion lasts me about a year. I'm not a big lotioner, but when I'm at the pottery studio, my hands get super, super, super dry. So I use this and I use, I don't have it in here. She has a little tub of stuff called great stuff. That's a lanolin salve. This is this is the real deal right here. So I bought a tube of this. I had used up most of my previous tube of her lotion during um, New York State testing. My kids, when they started to get droopy, I would come around and give them a little squirt of lotion to put on their hands. And they were like, the whole time, um, they started saying, Miss, can we have more of the bougie lotion? I was like, yeah, we can have more of the bougie lotion. Absolutely. Miss Romero is bad and bougie. Um, but this stuff is amazing so totally worth the purchase i love it and it's pretty much my go-to lotion i use this and i have a tub of body lotion that i use from lush but this is my main go-to i keep a stick tube thing i didn't open this one yet but it has like a pump top um i keep this in my desk at work and I keep one by my bed here at home but this is my main go-to I absolutely love it so there's that that was my non yarn purchase I also purchased that yarn bowl at Long Island Pleats and Fiber Bear um, as a potter I try to purchase things that are outside of my wheelhouse and even though I can make yarn bowls the potter who made that whose name I can't recall and I will try to find her business card and put it in the show notes she was taught by a Korean potter and so her forms there we go are inspired by Korean style throwing so it's a little bit different than what I do and her glazing oh my god it she's got depth of color that I wish I could get I'm just not there yet it's amazing um, so I definitely I was like I have to buy a bowl from her um, and I did I am hoping that I can find her business card to put the link in there if I can't I will be very upset because I wanted to contact her um, because I might buy more stuff from her that's not just a yarn bowl anyway my final acquisition at Long Island Fleece and Fiber Fair was from a relatively new dyer it was from Tina's Toasty Toes. And Tina has, I've known her for a while through Suzanne's Groovy Hughes Fibers group. There's her logo, super cute. I'm gonna hang it up with the other pins up here. They need to be fixed so that they're all facing forward. But um, yeah, so my Groovy Hughes Fibers pin is MIA because I wore it. Eh because there we go because I wore it to Long Island Fleece and Fiber Fair and then didn't hang it up I can see it behind the camera anyway um so I got a pin very nice I'll hang that up there and I bought more yak so again this is dyed on that deep rich base this is called deep space and it is a super rich mm, just looks black there we go. It is a super rich sort of um, almost purpley navy. It's like an indigo. Um, it is on a base that I've not seen before. It's a longer skein. It's 523 yards of yarn. It's merino wool, 
silk and yak but it's a single it's 120 gram skein I super love this I was anti-single for a while I don't know why I don't know what my problem was love it now um so that was my final yarn acquisition at Long Island Fleece and Fiber Fair so I divided my yarn in, my yarn my acquisitions into three little clumps so this is the middle clump and I took the project bag from Otterly Adorable Knits out of that but this is a cake wrapper so Otterly Adorable Knits has seen that people who pull from the outside of the ball the right way um, that we need a solution to keep our yarn from getting gross on the floor and tangled as well so this is a cake wrapper and what it does is it does almost the exact same thing as a ball, scat, ball sack skein wrapper thing from a lot of different bag makers but instead of being stretchy to help hold the yarn in the middle when you are center pulling from a cake it allows you to pull the yarn from the outside because it's looser but then the elastic at the top holds it in place so that your ball doesn't fall out um, she's got these in all different sizes now when I bought it this was the only size available but she's made um, bigger ones so that you can use them with worsted I don't know if they go up to bulky but there they are um, she does her shop updates Friday night at 8 central um, and they she's selling them in sets now because she seems to have realized that if we're gonna buy this we want to be able to use it on a multi skein project um, I was trying to use this with my fading point and I was knitting it on the train down to Alexandria to visit my friend who's getting the ripple bralette um, and I was like I wish I had more I wish I'd bought more because I had two two balls of yarn active at a time this is amazing this is fantastic this is the pink lemonade fabric that she has and it's lined with a coordinating fabric that's got little drip drops of lemon juice on it it's a lot of fun I like it my other acquisition that I made kind of in the middle was from Clever Clove who makes enamel pins so I've got a Jane Eyre pin and I've got a To Kill a Mockingbird pin ELA teacher I mean I named my cats after medieval poets so <laughs> obviously I'm a little bit of a book nerd Jane Eyre is my absolute favorite book ever I've read it many times and um, this shows the end where Jane goes back to Heathcliff after he's been disfigured by fire then marries him so got that and then the To Kill a Mockingbird pin is the inside of Boo Radley's tree so it's got the two soap figures of Gem and Scout the pocket watch and the ball of string it doesn't have all the gifts but that's okay um, I currently put my enamel pins on my notions pouch um, I love my notions pouch though and it's the right size and I've run out of room for pins so I'm going to come up with a solution that allows me to display them here in my yarn room I'll probably hang them over the sock link so that you guys can see them in the background um, and I'll be able to see them from my desk which is over there while I'm working um, and yeah I have to go to the craft store which is dangerous but I have to go there to get something to display my pins okay my final round of acquisitions like I said I divided it up into three groups was from while I was down in Alexandria and probably like a lot of you when I'm on a vacation I like to go to a local yarn store so that I can see what they have and um, hopefully find something that I haven't seen before this is Fiber Space, which is located in Old Town, Alexandria. It is a two level yarn store. It's beautiful inside, high ceilings, super cozy setup. I wanted to stay and sit and knit, but I had um, an entourage of non knitters with me and they were very patient. They sat down on the comfy, cozy couch area um, and they, they hung out while I, you know, went crazy in a yarn store. I was pretty good. I only bought three skeins so that could have been way worse um i purchased in addition to those three skeins though another enamel pin so this is the fiber space pin 
got little sheep sitting on an Adirondack chair with a project bag. I thought it was a ball of yarn for a second. Um, outside of fiber space, they have like an outdoor knitting area. It was 95 degrees, so we did not take advantage of that. But they have an outdoor knitting area with sheep sculptures and Adirondack chairs that you can sit in and knit. And it's kind of awesome. And I'm hoping that the next time I go down to Alexandria to visit Lindsay, I go when it's not 90,000 degrees. Um, and that I'm able to sit out there and enjoy knitting. I'll probably see if I can go down and spend the day there while she's at work. So that I don't have to worry about um, how people feel about sitting in a yarn store while I knit. Um, that's the thought. So fiber space. Absolutely loved pretty much everything about that shop. Um, it was their 10th anniversary while I was down there. So the first thing I got that is actually related to knitting is a button. And because my lights are messed up, you can't really see it. It's got flowers carved on it. I might put that on my, um, Madewell. I haven't decided, like I said, if I want a button on it or not. I never button cardigans, so why am I going to bother with a button? But Hoagie Locatelli is a genius and she said we should put a button on it, so... Maybe it's going to get a button. We'll see. Anyway, like I said, it was their 10th anniversary down there at Fiber Space. Um, and they had some exclusive colorways. So I had to get them. Um, this is from Knitterly Things. This is the Vesper sock with nylon base. And it is self-striping. I saw a sample of it knit up. They had um, like a cuff knit that showed a full repeat. I don't know if they crinked it on a machine or if they have somebody who is a knitting machine and just knit it out. Um, I never finish socks. I just don't. I might make some mitts out of this. I might try to make myself finish socks. I should really just make shorties. I only wear shorty socks. So maybe if I made shorties, I'd finish them quicker. I don't know. But this is a self striping colorway. If I don't use it, I've decided within the year, I'm going to put it in my gifting pile. I have a pile of um, nice yarns that just don't suit me that I've been like, I have to buy this and it's not like, it's my, oh no, I need a gift for a knitter. Darn, you're going to get a $30 skein of yarn. That stinks. Um, yeah. And I shop that pile sometimes, but it's really soft and I loved how it worked up. So I might try to make myself make socks, even though I have a pair of socks that's partially finished for a year. And I haven't finished them. So there's that. That's the first exclusive colorway. The second exclusive colorway is from the Lemonade Shop. And I've never had Lemonade Shop yarn before. It's very subtle. It is some of the natural merino left. You can see there's that color that I showed you before that's undyed. Dyed with a taupey color. And then it's got speckles of the teal and orange, which are Fiber Spaces colors. They have on the outside of their building a... Um, woman who looks kind of like Judy Jetson dressed up like that and then I bought I always try to buy a local skein so even though this was exclusive it's not quite local um I bought a skein of neighborhood yarn which I've seen in many shops but I was local to it so I had to buy it duh and it coordinates really well with the lemonade company this is the Ward Circle colorway on the Studio Sock Base. It coordinates really well, so I'm figuring I'll make a shawl that's this as the dominant color and then like a lace accent in the neighborhood aqua color. Um, that'll let the lace show through and then I can use the rest of this for something else, coordinate it with one of my many skeins of fingering weight. Hello, there's more, that's just some. Um, but yeah, so that's what I purchased, and those are my acquisitions. So I think I'm about done recording, and hopefully this time I don't sound like a complete and total nut job, like I did the last time I recorded, and hopefully it actually works, unlike the first time I recorded it. Um, yeah. So hopefully this worked out. I'm sorry about the lighting situation. I need to fix them or get something different or buy an AC adapter for them. I don't know. 
I need to do something because I'm in my cave again. Um, half my, I feel like that character from Batman, Two Face. I've got like the light side and the dark side. Um, yeah, but hopefully I'll get the lighting situation fixed soon and I'll see you again soon. Remember guys, in all of your interactions while you're dealing with people out on the fiber world, oops, not ouch.